Hey folks, um, this is Oli Wu. Uh, I hope my new setup is working out uh, that I showed you in my last tutorial last uh, weekend. Um, so the camera should be a lot more um, stable, even if I rock out on the keyboard. And I got my new lights, uh, so the lighting should be a bit more uh, indirect. I think it's a little bit whiter too, more white. And um, yeah, so temperature is a little bit different, overall it's still okay. And I think right now I can really see the um, highlights here very well, the buttons that are pressed. Um, today um, I want to show you the new features in the 1.4 firmware update. It just came out um, yesterday, um, so um, June 28th, um, 2019 was yesterday. And yeah, Yamaha really was on time. Uh, it's very easy to install, just follow the instructions uh, on their website. Uh, just keep in mind, um, I told you that last time, uh, if you press the menu number two under utility, and you go to factory reset and backup, and you want to be in the second page down here, um, include all audio files and press backup. That's what I did. And I showed you last time where to attach the um, hard disk to. So I recommend you taking a, a spare hard disk and you want to do it back there on the um, two device setting, like on the back of the keyboard. And that's exactly also where you put your um, thumb drive, your USB stick with the, um, the firmware update. Just put it there too and just follow the instructions. I think it's basically just then holding down the start stop button when you put the power on and just follow the instructions. It's actually very quick. And in the end, you can just um, restart it and then you can delete that um, extra file from your USB stick again. Yeah, so what's new in this uh, new version? Well, to summarize it, not a lot. <laughs> I think that one of the main features that I can't show you yet is um, the video out. So they now have a video out of the main screen um, through USB. So you got to get a special adapter for that. And I just ordered one on eBay, used one for 20 bucks. So I will tell you more um, about that maybe then in the next week's tutorial, as soon as I have it. We can maybe play around a bit with that and see if that gives us any, any benefits. And um, there's an additional setting for that, which becomes then active um, once we have the adapter attached also in the menu. Um, so we'll see about that later. Um, so here, I think the most prominent changes in the main screen are the, um, the um, beat display here. So you can now, when you start it, you can actually see your beats, one, two, three, four. Well, that's actually a quite nice improvement. Um, these are just smaller things. I don't care about them too much because I'm not using the transpose too much. But the first one shows you um, your octave transpose uh, transposition. And the second one, your node transposition. And I think I mentioned that before. One time I did my very first song, actually transposed it. Um, but I kept the keyboard the same. I just, um, I, just I don't like to fake it too much because you never know, you know, you could always transpose your keyboard to, to the song and play in all white keys, but then what are you going to do if you have to play it with a band at some point or with a with singer? So it's not, it's not ideal, I mean, playing it back on a different keyboard or on a piano. So I'm just trying to challenge myself and use even all black keys if need be. But the first one I did a different transposition, I transposed the, the, everything down a bit. Uh, but never mind that. So um, what else? We got the main um, tempo here. Um, and here, this is interesting. I think this is not a keyboard. I think this symbol is supposed to be like a um, score, like the five, uh, I don't know how you call them, five lines of your, of your normal score like these. These are these. And um, this is, I think, now showing you the total absolute um, bar inside the whole performance, be it playing back a style or a song. And this is maybe the most useful features of all. You can also see it here now uh, in the song, like four quarters, the tempo, could be a different tempo in theory. Um, again, for the style, you see the tempo and four quarters. Yeah, and you see basically which bar you're in now in the total bars, which is very nice. 
It's a MIDI song. This is an audio song, so here you would see the um, seconds. I don't have one here. But I think the number one most useful display for me is this one. Because I always got lost when I play back a style in the different sections. It's hard to remember how many bars you had. So when I'm playing back my styles, I might switch the section too early over there and say go from, from intro to A or A to B and I maybe forgot about a couple extra bars. So I think this would be maybe my number one improvement. So let's see if we reload the um, registration and uh, my intro has four bars and uh, you can watch basically here and here. So it's going to play the intro and then it's going to play um, section A. Now it's still not showing the section here. That would be one of my requests basically just for the tutorials because you don't see I'm all the way zoomed in to the display so you don't see my my um, keys that are highlighted with the sections on the left side. But that's I guess mostly more for for demoing and showing. Alright, so two or four, three. So so far we're still on the same. Now it's gonna go into A, and A has eight. See before I was always showing this here, I think here, basically just kept counting up the total bar, but now we can exactly see when I'm supposed to switch into the new section of the style. And now we're in B. And we just made our demo so it has all like eight bars. I think that's to me is probably the number one new feature that I really like. Other than that, there's um, some unnamed bug fixes. Um, and there's a couple of situations that I think I have never encountered where it's um, now basically preventing the keyboard from freezing. So I, got, I just I guess I just got lucky. So I won't go through that list. Please read through that history of changes yourself on the Yamaha website where you can download the firmware update. Um, and then the other main feature is that you can now assign a lot more different um, functions to either these assignable buttons or the ones over there outside of the display where it says assignable um, A to F. There's another one all the way on this side um, that's called rotary speaker assignable. So that always had only a couple functions. Uh, I honestly don't remember if anything changed there. Uh, and then there's the whole live section where you have these six knobs and the, um, I think it's nine different sliders. So maybe one feature that's nice here, if I'm switching my assignable, it actually gives me feedback now. So I've switched it to um, setting all the um, inserts on and off. So those are the effects um, in here. So I can basically just switch those on and off. All right, sometimes I just wanna hear the sound as it sounds without these effects if I want to take a sound into a style or a song and maybe I don't have enough slots left and I got to share the slot with, with another sound. Um, so that's, that's one ass um, assignment I used and that was always possible but the feedback is new. Uh, what else? I think this one, um, that was my, <laughs> my voice just got quiet. This is the fade in and fade out. So um, it's assigned to my assignable F, I think it's a custom assignment I did. Okay, so the, the only other thing that I could point out is maybe walk you through this list because it's not really documented. Let's just make sure I have enough time for that. All right, we're, we're about nine minutes in, so let's do this quickly. Um, yeah, basically, the lists were always a little bit different between those assignable ones and the assignable buttons here on the side and the live ones, but I think the live ones are the one that has have the most options. So maybe just take that as an example. Um, so I'm just gonna go through, say, the sliders now. We're starting with volume, keyboard volume, balance. I think balance is new. So there's like a whole new balance display. That looks pretty intimidating. Um, so maybe play around with that a little bit <laughs> another time. It looks like you can, you can um, it's like a pan, but between two different parts, it looks like. Interesting. Um, we got pan, reverb, chorus, reverb and chorus, insert effect. I'm not sure if that one is new. Then you got your high gain uh, for the EQ, EQ low gain, cutoff and resonance, cutoff resonance, filter, attack, release. These seem mostly the same. Tuning octave, pitch bend range, portamento time. 
some R parameters. I think I've seen them before. Um, style mute A and B, some um, vocoder effects, tempo, no assign. So I think they have not changed a lot. I'd say maybe the balance is the only new one for these guys. And then I need to um, fix that assignment here. Let me do it quickly. Um, I think I actually want this to be the style. So I'm already changing it on the fly. So this is the style two and this is the style one, three and so on. Okay, so um, I, I, I would say we let's not go through these. Um, they should be exactly the same or even a little bit less. Uh, let's do a direct access and clicking on the assignable ones. So we got the, the buttons A to F and we got the home shortcuts. If then I think the buttons have a couple more, so let's go through those. Starts with mixer, channel on off, line out, score, lyrics, text viewer, mix setting, vocal harmony. Station sequence, I think they're all the same. Live control might be new, assignable might be new. Panel lock. I'll use the style creator for sure here. Um, Tuning, those are the same. Expansions, MIDI. Couple of shortcuts to the um, to the main menus like MIDI and utility. Time. Those might be new. Registration, bank information, and edit. Side information. Articulation, I think, is not new. Um, those are not new. Modulation, hold. Maybe initial touch might be new. Left hold. So there's a couple of those you have here on the um, right side, and the voice select, right? The the um, left hold. Keyboard harmony, patchio is also here to the right side. A patchio hold. Uh, maybe these registration memories, the ones you have down here. So you can assign those to other buttons if that makes sense. I think that's new. Um, sequence, I think, was there before. Bank two. Live control knob assign, that might be new. Slider assign, reset, I think is new. With the styles, um, there might be a couple new ones. Um, you could always select directly, and I think then fill down or fill up is going to up or down. I was always missing one that just says next without fill, uh, which I don't think is still available. It's kind of strange. Oh, they fixed that. They had four endings. I think style, strictly speaking, internally has three, uh, four intros and four endings and then it was kind of a bug that they were showing them because normally you can't get to them only with software on the computer. Accompaniment, OTS link, they might be new. Those are the buttons here next to um, above the style sections. Um, autofill as well, half bar in, in and out, we already used that. Finger and finger on bass, I used that. I think I showed that at some point. Bass hold, then the one-touch settings might be new, but they're just down here anyways. Um, Multi-pads might be new. They're also already down here, just outside of my screen. Um, synchro start is, I think, new. And there's a couple more for songs, I think, which might be useful, actually. I, sometimes I miss that. Let me get back to that in one of the next tutorials. I think I missed a song or style play at some point when I was either in the style creator or the song player. Always had to use um, the software button for that. So that might be nice to have that actually on an, on an assignable button. Um, so I'll, we'll play around a bit and see. Maybe I move my fade out from the right side to the rotary speaker one and um, put another function on, uh, on my button F there. Okay, so let's repeat. So there's a lot of like A and B song, um, song methods, functions. This seems new, it's so small. <laughs> song MIDI position memorize on off, no idea. Oh, the position markers, I think they were not available. Yeah, so there's, um, you can set different markers in a MIDI song and just jump to them, like a little memory. This is um, song MIDI position loop on and off. List shuffle. 
Now, I've never really played around with this whole playlist stuff at all, which is here in the main buttons, song and playlist. Okay, text viewer, looks page, that was there. Talk on and off. Yeah, okay, voice harmony. So those are those buttons on the top of the left side. Effect, part on and off. Insertion effect, metronome. See, I would like to use that metronome on and off in, when I do like styles, but I think the, these buttons are not even working in the styles, so that hasn't been changed. Um, so I always have to use the soft button to get the metronome when I'm recording style parts. Tempo is not new, tap tempo, style tempo, lock, hold, transpose, octave, scale tune, bypass, no idea. I think maybe you can set different scale types, like quarter notes and stuff. Yeah, that's about it. So, nah, all in all, not too exciting, I think. But, um, you know, just going to put that back on mixer. That's what it is. Uh, if you have any other things you're discovering or any other comments, please let me know in the comments. And that's it for today, folks. Um, this is Ali Wu.